in this class i am going to describe the classes cyclostomata chondrichthys and osteichthys first i am taking up class cyclostomata cyclos means round stoma means mouth in these animals the mouth is circular in shape so the name cyclostomata then these are the lowest living vertebrate animals and they lead either ectoparasitic life or scavenging life ectoparasites means some of them live as ectoparasites on the fishes others lead scavenging life that means they live on dead and decaying animals in the sea water these are all cold blooded animals or pygotherms they can't maintain a constant body temperature they are also known as exotherms the body is like a fish but these are not true fishes jaws are completely absent their skin is smooth and without any scales the skin also produces copious amounts of mucus mucus helps in swimming and also escaping from the enemies gills are 6 to 15 pairs and a gill cover or opercula is absent the notochord remains throughout the life of these animals the heart is two chambered with one atrium and one ventricle as the heart pumps only the venous blood or deoxygenated blood it is known as venous heart then the renal portal system is absent in all the vertebrates hepatic portal system is present here also a hepatic portal system is present but a renal portal system is absent kidneys are mesenephric cranial nerves are 8 to 10 pairs cranial nerves means the nerves arising from the brain coming to the ears only the inner ear is present the external and middle ears are absent and the inner ear has only one or two semicircular canals these are marine animals but petromyzon migrates into freshwater rivers for the purpose of breeding so migration from sea water to fresh water is known as anadromous migration so petromyzon exhibits anadromous migration then the petromyzon sorry <coughs> petromyzon is oviparous and also fertilization is external eyes are also well developed in these animals but eyelids are absent petromyzon or lamprey which is also known as lamprey the adult animals exhibit anadromous migration and after breeding they die their larva is known as amniocete larva the amniocete larva comes back into sea water to grow into adults after reaching adulthood again they go back into freshwater rivers for breeding purpose then another example is the mixin or hagfish these are commonly known as slime eels because they produce large amounts of mucus these animals lead scavenging life and they always live in sea water this is about some of the points regarding class cyclostomata coming to the division nethostomata nethos means jaws stoma means mouth in these animals jaws are present surrounding the mouth then paired fins and paired limbs are absent the paired fins are absent in these cyclostomes they have no paired fins but here paired fins are present in the fishes and paired limbs are present in tetrapods tetrapods means amphibians reptiles birds and mammals tetrapoda means having four pairs of limbs then nethostomata is divided into classes chondrichthys osteichthys 
amphibia, reptilia, eaves, and mammalia. Then, I will have told you reptiles, amphibians, eaves, and mammals are called tetrapods. Cognitis and Rastictis are together known as fishes or pisces. Then, eaves and mammals are homeotherms or endotherms or warm blooded animals. Fishes, amphibians, and reptiles are cold blooded or pyrotherms or ectotherms because they can't maintain a constant body temperature. Then, I will take up all the classes one by one. First, I am taking up class chondrictis. Chondrin or chondrios means cartilage. Ictios means fish. In these fishes, the endoskeleton is entirely made of cartilage. So, the name chondrictis. So, all these fishes are cartilaginous fishes. Study of fishes is known as ichthyology. Whether it is a bony fish or cartilage fish, study of fishes is called ichthyology. Fishes are pygrotherms. They can't maintain a constant body temperature. Then the body of fishes is divided into a head and a trunk. A neck is absent. In all the fishes, a neck is absent. Neck is present only in reptiles, birds, and mammals. Presence of neck is an adaptation for terrestrial life. So in the amphibia also, neck is absent. Then the body is covered with placoid scales. These scales are directed backwards. Teeth are also derived from placoid scales. And in these fishes, teeth are replaced many times during their lifetime. Mouth is ventral in position. But nostrils are dorsal in position. Gills are 5 to 7 pairs, but a gill cover or operculum is absent. Jaws are very powerful in these animals, and these are highly predaceous fishes. They are predators, they hunt for food, and these are very dangerous animals, especially animals like sharks. In cartilage, in cartilage fishes, an air bladder is absent. Air bladder helps in buoyancy. That means maintaining the fish at a depth without much effort. But because of the absence of air bladder, there is a danger of sinking to the bottom. That's why the cartilage fishes will go on swimming continuously to avoid drowning. The heart has two chambers. One atrium and one ventricle and pumps only venous blood. So, heart is venous heart. Then, RBC are oval, nucleated and biconvex. Remember, except in mammals, in all the other, other vertebrates, the RBC are oval, nucleated and biconvex. Only in mammals, they are disc-like, without nucleus and biconcave. Then, both hepatic and the renal potassiums are well developed. Kidneys are mesonephric and they produce urea. Urea is the nitrogenous waste materials. So, cartilage fishes are ureotelic animals. There is one very important point here. The cartilage fishes also store urea in their blood so that they can overcome asthmatic problems. Then, the caudal fin is heterocircle. That means, the upper lobe of the caudal fin is bigger and the ventral lobe of the caudal fin is smaller. That's why it is called heterocircle caudal fin. Brain is well developed with highly developed olfactory lobes and cerebellum. Because the olfactory lobes are well developed, they can sense the smell of any other animal in water easily. Because they swim continuously, the cerebellum is also highly developed. Because cerebellum is concerned with equilibrium. Cranial nerves are 10 pairs. Eyes are well developed, but 
but eyelids are absent. Coming to the ear, I will have told you, I think only inner ear is present and the semicircular canals are three. In all the fishes, there is a system known as a lateral line system or lateral line sense organs. The lateral line sense organs help in detection of movements in the water. Then the sexes are separate and the males have a pair of claspers. This is a very important point. In the males, a pair of copulated organs known as claspers are present and the claspers help in internal fertilization. So, in cartilage fishes, fertilization is internal and the eggs are megalithal and these eggs are kept inside the body till the development is over. That's why cartilage fishes are described as ovo viviparous fishes. They are not actual viviparous but they retain the megalithal eggs inside their bodies till the development is over. That's why they are described as ovo viviparous animals. Then coming to the, and during the development of these fishes, what happens is, a placenta appears between the mother and fetus. This placenta is known as yolk sac placenta. This is not a true placenta you have seen in mammals. It is a different type of placenta, so it is known as yolk sac placenta. Coming to the examples, third fellow, its common name is electric ray. It produces a powerful current and gives a shock to the prey. Trigon. It is called stingray. At the base of the sting, there is a poisonous gland and a sting. If anyone goes nearby, it gives a sting and injects poison. Scoliodon is known as dogfish. It is a common shark found in sea waters. Pristis is called the sawfish. It is the anterior part, that is snout is projected forwards or growth forwards and it has the shape of a saw, a defense organ. That's why it got the name sawfish. Carcharodon. Carcharodon is a great white shark. It is a very dangerous shark because it is the man-eater, man-eating fish. Spirna or Jaigena is commonly known as hammer-headed shark because its head resembles a hammer. That's why it got the name hammer-headed shark. Then Rhinodon typhus. It is the largest fish and also the second largest animal after blue whale. That is about some of the important features of class Convictus. Now coming to the class Ostictus. Osteon means bone, ichthyos means fish. In these fishes, the endoskeleton is mainly made of bone. Yep. Small amounts of cartilage is also present, but the main part of the skeleton is made of bone. That's why it got the name Osteichthys. These are also pygotherms or cold blood animals. They can't maintain a constant body temperature. These fishes live in both fresh water sea water and also in brackish water. The body is covered by plaque, uh, sorry, cycloid scales, tenoid scales, ganoid scales, etc. But the placoid scales are absent here. Mouth is terminal and the nostrils are dorsal in position. Coming to the gills, these are only four pairs. And the gills are covered by a gill cover or operculum. The body is streamlined and contains a lateral line sense organs, just like in cartilage fishes. The important point is these fishes have an air bladder, a gas filled bladder inside their trunk. By adjusting the gas pressure inside the air bladder, they can maintain buoyancy at any depth of water. In some of the bony fishes, the air bladder is modified into a lung to help in aerial respiration. Then, the heart is two-chambered with one atrium 
and one ventricle and it is a venous heart as it pumps only venous blood. Both renal and hepatic portal systems are well developed. RBC are oval, nucleated and biconvex. Kidneys are mesonephric, but the nitrogenous waste product is mainly ammonia. So these are ammonotelic animals. Then the caudal fin is a homocircle. That means the upper and the lower lobes of the fin are equal in size. In the brain, optical lobes and cerebellum are well developed. That means they have got a good vision and good equilibrium. Cranial nerves are ten pairs. Then eyes are well developed. Eyes are well developed, but eyelids are absent. In all the fishes and cyclostomes, eyelids are absent. Only in tetrapods we come across eyelids. Inner ear is only inner ear is present, and it has three semicircular canals. Sexes are separate and fertilization is external. These are mostly oviparous animals and exhibit external fertilization. They produce a large number of eggs. Coming to the examples, marine fishes, exocetus, it is commonly known as a flying fish. Its pectoral and pelvic fins are very large and they can fly on water for some distance. They can't fly like birds, but they leap long distances. That's why it got the name flying fish. Hippocampus, which is called a sea horse. Its head is like that of a horse. That's why the name sea horse. Here, the males exhibit parental care. The female fish lays eggs and the male fish takes the eggs, keeps them in its brood pouch and takes care of the eggs till they develop into young ones. So in hippocampus, male fish takes the parental care. Latimeria chalumne. It is a living fossil. It has not undergone evolution changes over millions of years. Echinus, sucker fish. It has a sucker on the head and it is not a parasite. It uses the sucker only for transport. Synapta. The body of the fish is flattened, laterally, so it is known as flat fish or sole fish. There is another fish, the salmon fish. Salmon fish exhibits anadromous migration. It also migrates from seawater to freshwater rivers, breeds once and it dies. It never comes back. Then coming to the freshwater fishes, labio, common name rohu, katla, common name Cutla only. These two are known as carp fishes, major carp fishes used in pisciculture in most of the parts of India. Clarius it is called as mugger. Diprai fishes. Diprai fishes are lung fishes. Their air blood is modified into a lung <coughs> and they can breathe air like land animals. The diprai fishes are very important because they exhibit discontinuous distribution. They are present in South America, Africa and Australia. Nowhere else on earth except in these, in these three continents. And this type of distribution is known as discontinuous distribution. The flightless birds or ratty birds also exhibit discontinuous distribution. One example of deprivation is Protopterus. It is found in Africa. Then aquarium fishes, Betta, it is commonly known as the fighting fish. Then Tyrophila, it is known as angel fish. So these are some of the examples of class Ostictus. Thank you.